there's a feeling you get when you first take off. Break the bounds of gravity. Experience the world like birds see it. In March of 2013, the Women in Naval Aviation exhibit opened at the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida. A collection of stories, pictures, and artifacts surround the walls, signifying women's contribution to naval aviation. On May 21, 2014, the Naval Aviation Museum hosted an event celebrating the 40th anniversary of women in naval aviation, featuring a five-person panel moderated by Vice Admiral Robin Braun. It's been 40 years since the first female aviator got her wings, and I'm tremendously proud of the accomplishments of women from 1974 through 2014. Today was fantastic for me because I met the woman who inspired me to join the Navy. After I had graduated from college, I was at my father's home in California, and he had a copy of a Naval Aviation magazine on his coffee table. And I looked at that magazine and I saw a photo of the second female aviator to get her wings, Captain Judy Newfer Bruner. I grew up wanting to be a, an astronomer to find life in the universe. And at one point, though, I, I took a turn and enlisted in the Navy and was fortunate enough to be selected for flight training. And the article was about the Navy's new women pilots. They'd done this fleur-de-lis. They trained them and then they sent them off to different corners of the world as solos acts at their squadron. But just the idea of flying just caught my imagination. I thought, that just sounds so cool. In 1973, Secretary of the Navy John Warner helped end the restriction on women becoming aviators. Judy Neufer Bruner was one of the first women to report to flight training. My father was a pilot in World War II, and as I was growing up, he was managing a small airport in rural Ohio. So I got to spend a lot of summers at the airport helping him and, and every now and then I'd get to go flying with him and uh, I was able to solo in a Piper Cub when I was 16, which was very exciting for me at the time. Um, but certainly that was because of my dad and uh, what he did and so that was a, a big influence on me. But then I went to college and started moving in other directions and it wasn't until I got in the Navy and I was on my first tour when they opened up naval aviation to women. And, but I already had a love of aviation that I grew up with. I got my wings in February of 1974. I was in the first group of women that went through flight training. I was a uh, female aviator number two. I got my wings three days after female aviator number one got her wings. It was very new at that time. Women didn't do that. And so um, I, I think they were trying to understand what it all meant as well. I know there was a lot of scrutiny for the first group of women that uh, reported to Pensacola because they were pioneers, totally. And it had never been done before. Admiral Zomal opened up the program with one of his Z-grams, Z-gram 116, and opened up naval aviation billets. So when they got here, it was just a lot of uh, eyes on them to see how they would do. So there were just a handful of us that flew jets, tactical jets, and I was the first woman to be qualified to do dogfighting, where two planes uh, maneuver to try for, to get a shot on the other one to shoot it down. And I was just so fortunate that I had the, the, the right commanding officer that supported uh, us getting trained. And so I got that qualification and it was so exhilarating to go out and dogfight. And even if, if I won the dogfight and beat some guy, he had to admit she was just better. 
there's no other way to spin it. So it, it all came down to brains and not brawn. It was brains and skill, and gender just didn't matter. <laughs> For me, just seeing that, uh, that women were allowed to uh, become naval aviators and serve their country in uniform flying for the Navy, that to me was inspiration that if she had been able to do it, that maybe I would be able to, to do the same thing. In 1979, I was selected as one of the 15 women who would come into naval aviation and train to be a naval aviator that year. I came back to Pensacola for the first time since I'd been a baby to start flight training, to, first to become commissioned, uh, go through officer candidate school and then go through flight training to get my wings. And so I ended up training at Whiting and then going to Corpus Christi and I got my wings in February of 1981. So people often ask me what aircraft uh, I like the best and that's really a hard question because they all had such different missions and they all had such different uh, capabilities. And so I can't say that any one was, was better than the other. Some were faster, some were uh, more powerful, some had a bigger crew than others. But every experience I had was absolutely fantastic. And I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. They were repairing the Hueys that had come back from Vietnam. And our job that morning was to, to just take a Huey out for a spin. So they loaded up seven of us and so there were six they had the doors slid open the three seats facing out and the, the co-pilot seat was empty and, and uh, the pilot said well you know who's going to sit up front and all my friends who knew me was like make Nuvius do it and they're pushing me I'm like you don't have to tell me twice jumped in the front seat picked it up like you know not four inches off the ground backed it out of the spot did a you know a, a turn on the on the uh, the skid zoomed off uh, out of uh, you know, Cor Corpus Christi Sound, went over to, uh, to one of the islands and chased jackrabbits around, and it's like, this is the flying that I was meant to do. Women of Naval Aviation is sponsored by... Back from vacation, smiley face. Hashtag best hotel ever, hashtag best room ever, hashtag best room view ever, Hashtag white sands, hashtag floaties, hashtag poolside, hashtag a 24 hour gym, hashtag best summer ever, hashtag never too many hashtags. Margaritaville is just a scratch-off ticket away. <clears throat> Much better. Play the Margaritaville scratch-off game for your chance to win up to $250,000 or a second chance for a vacation in paradise. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Long last at Pensacola Honda, all active duty, active and ready reserve and retirees get a $500 military appreciation offer. Choose $159 a month on a 2014 Civic LX Sedan Automatic or $199 a month on a 2014 Accord LX Automatic. How about 0.9% for 60 months on 2014 CRVs and Cross Tours or 1.9% for 60 months on 2014 Pilots, Accords and Civics? PensacolaHonda.com or Highway 29 in Car City. The success of the first group paved the way for young aspiring female aviators. While more opportunities became available, options were still limited for women in aviation. When I first joined the Navy, nobody told me that there were laws about women flying in combat. And of course at the time women were able to fly cargo aircraft or non-combat aircraft. 
And so I didn't realize that when I first joined the Navy. Shortly afterwards, somebody came to us, to the women, and said, well, these are your options once you become a naval aviator. So I just remember being very surprised that I wasn't able to go do all the same jobs that a man was. There were a lot of conflicting messages going on. But I think what was going on best was that I knew I wanted to be there for the right reason. I knew that compared to my classmates, I was in there with a decent set of tools, of background flying, of academics that was going to be okay if I kept my head down and kept coloring. After all, I mean, the aircraft doesn't know the difference. It knows the difference between a good pilot and a bad pilot, but it doesn't know how long your hair is. I marched on the drill team. I had to wear a men's uniform, a men's combination cover, and take all this hair and put it up and make it disappear. And um, we managed to do it such that the, the other guys on the other team didn't know we had women on the drill team. Nearly 20 years since the first female aviators received their wings, women in aviation were only allowed to train and participate in non-combat missions. It wasn't until 1993 that Defense Secretary Les Aspen authorized female pilots to conduct missions of combat and serve on warships. When they lifted all the combat exclusion rules, I was really excited for the women who came behind me because they would have opportunities to do things that I was not able to do. I first got my wings back in uh, 1991 was when I was actually winged. I started flying in 1989 down in Pensacola and uh, it was an amazing time because the opportunities were beginning to unfold to do different things and I was given the opportunity in 1991 to go be an adversary pilot and fly A4s. I was the first uh, tactical air commander of a squadron, so I was CEO of a tactical squadron, the Gunslingers, and I was also CAG of Carrier Wing 3, uh, both of which were first uh, aboard the Truman both times. And they are first, but I think the biggest thing that I see is that the firsts are going to be gone. And that being a first female this or a first female that, that part will fade away and we're going to get to the point where we don't talk about somebody as the first female, we just talk about that person being CAG. That was the greatest transition for me as I had these wonderful CEOs working for me and I don't think they saw me as anybody else other than CAG and that's all they should think about when they're looking at me. And how am I doing my job, and am I doing a good job at leading them on where we need to go? My husband's a naval aviator, so he is not impressed with me, to say the least. My children don't know that there's anything special about what I do. They just know that mom's a naval aviator, and I was on this ship, and I led a bunch of people, and I got a chance to defend our country. In recent times, women uh, were allowed to not just be pilots, but be pilots in all capacities to include combat. When I joined the Marine Corps, the opportunity was already present that I could become a, a naval aviator as well and, and fly any platform and, and have the opportunity to go to combat uh, without any restrictions. Uh, some of the other ladies weren't provided that opportunity uh, or it came to be during their time in the Navy and the Coast Guard. Uh, so when I joined, I knew it was because I could fly in combat and that was one of my choices in, in selecting aviation was that I didn't have any, any restrictions. When I went to the basic school to become a Marine Corps officer, uh, part of that is at the end you choose what Marine Occupational Specialty you have. And when you go through the selections for men, there was at the time 23 choices and for women 9 choices. And uh, I found that to be somewhat upsetting because of my 9 choices. Just for me personally, that wasn't so exciting. So when I looked at the list, um, being an aviator was definitely the most exciting, though on that day, I really thought of the uh, 23 choices the, the men were given, that you know maybe being a tank driver would be awesome, or um, working you know, in intelligence would be awesome. And, and so I thought, well, if I can't do that, I'm at, I'm at least gonna take a combat billet, and, uh, and I chose aviation for that reason. Of course, it's wonderful to serve your country, and if it's in that capacity, um, both exciting and rewarding. In 2013, the Secretary of Defense decided to revoke the 1994 direct ground combat definition and assignment rule, allowing women who are currently serving in the military to be assigned to any aviation squadron. More females are taking on leadership roles and making a large impact on the future of women aviators.
I fly a AH-1 Whiskey Cobra helicopter. It's an attack helicopter uh, with two pilots in it. Uh, they sit uh, front to back, um, kind of stadium seating, and the helicopter does not carry other people, just two pilots and uh, a bunch of weapons um, to fulfill the attack role. The places I've been are uh, Kuwait, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kyrgyzstan, just for a transit base, uh, Camp Pendleton, and really just within the United States, Yuma, 29 Palms. I used to fly UH-1 November, uh, Huey, and now I fly the UH-1 Yankee this year, Huey. Women of Naval Aviation is sponsored by... Back from vacation, smiley face. Hashtag best hotel ever, hashtag best room ever, hashtag best room view ever, Hashtag white sands, hashtag floaties, hashtag poolside, hashtag a 24 hour gym, hashtag best summer ever, hashtag never too many hashtags. No matter where you are, Margaritaville is just a scratch-off ticket away. <clears throat> Much better. Play the Margaritaville scratch-off game for your chance to win up to $250,000 or a second chance for a vacation in paradise. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. After our house fire, we called Paul Davis. They're professional and they care. Fire, water, mold, we do it all. We got our home and our lives back. If it happens to you, call Paul. When our home flooded, we called Paul Davis. They're reliable and they really care. Water, fire, mold, we do it all. We got our home and our lives back. And they helped with our insurance. If it happens to you, call Paul. When they opened up aviation and the first group of women started going through, we faced a much different world than there is right now, though none of that prevented us from becoming naval aviators. I knew that our H-46 was ready for a big package of upgrades that was going to require significant testing. So I knew that they were going to be looking for H-46 pilots. So it's like. The right time, right place, been kind of the story of my life. Um, all I can do is say no. So I went ahead and put my package in, and um, after, I think it was a two-month wait, they actually came back and said, we would like you to come to test pilot school. And I'm not even sure at that point I knew that there hadn't been a woman pilot. It was just that I had the H-46 experience, and I had spent a lot of time with the H-46 in the maintenance shop, complaining about the problems that we were having, about the maintainability, the safety issues. And that's what this package was going to do, was fix all those things. I thought, maybe they're sending me because they know I can't make it. And my boss, who is a, a lovely LDO commander, called me in. I worked in the maintenance department. And so, you know, about six o'clock, so it's after quitting time, sat down, closed the door, and we sat there and he said, what's the problem? And I said, what if they're sending me there to fail? And he said, do you intend to fail? I said, no, I don't intend to fail. He says, well then, what's the problem? Do you want to go down and fix the aircraft? I said, well, yeah, I want to fix the aircraft. He said, then take the doggone job. Showed up at Pax River a couple months later and uh, had the experience where I was told I didn't belong there by, by one or more people, but was told by the guys that really mattered to me that you're in it with the rest of us, and our deputy commander had told the guys to treat it, treat me as a classmate. Treat me as a classmate, no special favors, no hazing, just your classmates, you're here to 
to do a job, you're here to get yourselves trained, um, make it so. We went through some challenges at times. I, I have no regrets at all about how I got to this point because it, it enabled me to do the things that I've done. We all think that we're just another one of the pilots, but it's, it's great to hear the stories of all the other women that are out there and the experiences that they've had going through uh, training and going through their time out in the fleet squadrons and operational forces and, and being able to listen to them and, and be able to compare. I've had people ask me, you know, what kind of problems have you had being a female going through and being in the military? And honestly, I, I, I really can't off the top of my head think of any real issues that anyone's brought up with the fact that I'm female. And it's because of these ladies going through and really blazing the trail and doing such a great job. If they hadn't done such fantastic things, maybe I would have had problems. They knocked down all the barriers for me and because of their performance and how well they did, it made all the difference in the world. I just feel like one of the luckiest people on the planet because I have a career in the Navy and I have a career with NASA, the two best organizations in the world. I know absolutely that my, my experience in the Navy enabled me to do what I've been able to do in NASA. It's just part of who I am. I'm tremendously proud of the accomplishments of women from 1974 through 2014. People who have taken naval aviation to the next step and done what we were not able to do. It's fulfilling a specific mission. If you can continue to persevere and if you just don't give up on yourself, the opportunities are amazing. My father was obviously very instrumental in um, me becoming a pilot, and I, maybe just not a pilot, but really a good member of society. So, you know, being respectable and honorable, and um, I think those have served me well in the military. He also provided me the opportunity to see what was possible. So I don't think maybe as a young kid I would have known I could be a pilot. I think the most important thing um, for all young people is if you just don't give up on yourself, you'll see what opportunities that going down that path can provide. I mean, there are things that everybody would be interested in, whether it's um, going into space or how to design a car or how to fly a plane. I think the opportunities in science and engineering are just incredible. Go challenge yourself. You can always back off, but if you start with the easy stuff, it's really hard to, to ramp up. Understand that what you're gonna be might not be invented yet. If they want to be part of a team, not only can they be a naval officer, but they can be a naval aviator, and they can do every job there is almost in the Navy, and all those opportunities are there for them if they want them. One of my heroes of my life is my mom, who was a housewife and raised four kids. So for me, the greatness of the United States is the fact that all these opportunities are there for you. It's what you want to do, and you just have to go out there and grab a hold of them if you want them. My dream was that I was fascinated by aviation and I was fascinated by naval aviation and the fact that that I tried when I I wasn't sure if I'd be able to make it or not but the fact that I tried and was able to achieve that dream I think is important for young people because if they have something they're really passionate about doing I think it's important that they do the best that they can to try to make that happen. Something that you're passionate about, that you love doing, and that you're able to give back in that role. And that's what Naval Aviation's been for me. What gives longevity to your career is doing what you enjoy and doing what you love. And if you find something that you love, then, then keep pushing towards it and keep doing it. I love flying planes and this is the place where I get to do it the most. There's a feeling you get when you when you first take off. I remember the first time I flew in a helicopter and just being just in awe of the fact that we were hovering, that we just lifted off the ground and we could just sit there and it was just incredible. And sometimes when you do something a lot, things become mundane. Like the first time you drive a car, it's the greatest thing ever. Uh, and then we kind of get tired of doing it. And I can just keep reminding myself, looking at the different places we fly over and seeing the landscapes. It's always awe-inspiring. Uh, to go out and, and fly and, and you know break the, the bounds of, of gravity and go out and defy physics and, and, and fly and experience the world like, like birds see it. It's, it's incredible. Ladies? New on Blab. 
It's 11 o'clock somewhere. I like that better than 5 o'clock somewhere else. A brand new show featuring an all-star cast of local female leaders. I just fell in love. You want to tell us about that? Showcasing the hottest local celebrities, chefs, artists, and much more. Oh, really? Yes. Right. Oh, my gosh. Discussing life in the community and hot topics you'll have to tune in to find out. A lot better than other conversations you can have with your parents. Blab and Gap. New episodes every Tuesday morning at 11. Only on Blab. When our producer came to me and she said, look, you got to do this Blab TV, I'm thinking to myself, Blab TV? What is Blab TV? But guys, let me tell you something. Since we got on Blab TV, there is no more visibly effective advertising that I've ever done in my life. I mean, it's just been amazing. People walk in here every day and say, we saw you guys on Blab TV. I'll give you an example of what happened yesterday, just yesterday. We had some people there from Kentucky. They were vacationing in Destin. They were sitting in their hotel room. They saw Blab TV, came right over here and bought a car right off the showroom floor. That's how it works. I mean, I have never seen more visibly effective advertising where people walk in and say, this is where we saw you. I mean, we do advertising in the newspaper. We do a bunch of other stuff, but I, there is nothing that we do that is more effective than when we're on Blab TV. We enjoy Blab TV, and if you really want to get a bang for the buck, it's Blab TV. Hike. That's actually a pretty good idea. Because when you take us hiking, or let us run outside, acting silly, getting dirty, and helping in the garden, you're not only making your day better, you're making our lives healthier and happier. Playing outside is not only fun, it helps us feel our best inside and out. So next time when mom wants you to take a hike, tell her to go to beoutthere.org to find fun ideas for helping kids enjoy the great outdoors. Let's be honest, it's not bad for the parents either. They're so cute at this age.